the payroll's all set. We've approved those minutes. Um, correspondence. There are uh, two correspondence. Um, one of them that came through, it looks like from an, a national-wide um, open meeting law 3D. Um, I think that it's because it's nationwide. I think that um, I've also been in talks with Carolyn Murray, who is going to be planning an open meeting law uh, class for the town of Pembroke. Um, for all the employees and boards. So um, I really think this was nice that they sent along, but I don't think that we need to order it. Um, it's two volumes at 1,286 pages um, at a cost of about $190. So I really don't think that we need to have that on hand, but it was correspondence that came in. The other correspondence that did come in, um, we're going to hold this, I guess, if you guys can hold on to this. Carol has a copy of it, so she'll make sure it's in our next meeting folder. But this was a homeowner that reached out to me via email, and I'll give you each a copy in regards to their situation that they... The employees and elected officials with kind of one session? Correct. Okay. What did she probably do for the convenience factor or something that... I would suggest is, is that she put out two or three different dates so that it makes it easier for people to be able to attend. You know, maybe one during the day, maybe one in the evening, that kind of thing. Um, did you get, okay, thank you. Did okay. you get the sign of the blue? Did you know this was coming? Um, they had talked to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this homeowner had talked to our requests. And we also had another homeowner um, who canceled because of personal reasons not being able to make it tonight, who also has a complaint. Um, having dealt with Wind River issues previously, um, it seems by reading this letter, um, but we'll just save it and keep it for the, all of our documentation. And we'll probably have everything all pulled together in previous issues. Remember when Eric Miller came in and visited us? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to leave this one in my folder, Carol, mm -hmm. um, my, in my file, and then we'll just have it for the next time. Okay. Can we please see if we can get Eric Mueller? Um, when would the next meeting be? The next um, regularly scheduled meeting would occur on August 22nd. Just as a note to the board, of course, that is my vacation. As I let you know earlier, I will not be able to be in attendance. By all means, the board can meet or do whatever they'd like. I just want you to know you won't have my assistance at that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that we should have you here at that meeting? If we're going to have Wind River, is there choice anything the board. that you can add to it? Um, other than only what the people are presenting to me, I mm -hmm. wasn't on site for either event, as I've warned both of them. For historical, but for historical, I would be obviously have the knowledge of, of their activities in the past years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have a file by chance? Um, no. Each individual complaint would have been in the property address that would pertain to it. There's not a file specific to them, but okay. I'd be happy to take a look. I know there is at least a, a G file of letters, uh, Wind River letters, so I could probably okay. pull that up. Because I know the last one that was really yeah. in difficulty was Birch Street. Correct. Um, that one was quite a interesting that situation. That was interesting to say the last. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, um, look. So if it, if you're not here the 22nd, then where do I go? I just your next regularly. Well, we go right into Labor Day. Your next regularly scheduled meeting would be the 12th of um, September. Both people that said they couldn't make it tonight have been advised. One needs to redo their. Uh, engineering and layout, so he did not seem concerned as I spoke to him. That was a gentleman that canceled literally at like 420. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Hinthorne just said please to make her aware of the next meeting so she might schedule for it because tonight is not a possibility. She did not seem overly concerned about when the next meeting was, just wanted to make sure she had an opportunity to speak to the board. Mm -hmm. So that's completely at the will of the board of what you want to do. Obviously no one meets Labor Day weekend because no one would be around and no one would come in. To, to present yeah. anything, and I, 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 I understand completely <laughs> yeah. why they wouldn't. I completely understand. Thinking yeah. it's a vacation period for exactly. a lot of people. I, I would imagine a lot of people would be out of town. So, so what do you think? Do you so feel we'll married to the fact that we? I, I would like to have our health agent pr present when when River here. Um, expertise, not just historical reasons, but I think she can add value to 
our concerns. I guess my question for the board would be, do you feel that we need to have, or do you think it's important to have Ms. Henson here the same week that we have Lynn River here? I would think it, this is purely my opinion, but you have a complainant mm. and someone being complained about. I think We're talking have, about them, so somebody I would should think be, if yeah. you did not avail them the opportunity, they would mm -hmm. make the allegation that the board that was being prejudiced. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I would urge caution in that. Yeah. That's my opinion, strictly. You can do it legally, but... Your There's two here. ways we can do this. We could call her on in one meeting, and we could call Eric in on another meeting to give them both their votes the same, the say, or we could call them both in at the same time. My opinion is they should be here at the same time so that he can counteract. Because see, on this one, what you underlined was yes. the yeah. exact problem that I had. That's on exactly that what I did too. Yeah. Like, Right. <laughs> that, so that you know, one statement. I mean, I that one statement threw the whole letter off. Exactly. The whole context of the letter. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't feel particularly married to either whether okay. they have them separate well, or but whatever. And keep in mind, you can schedule Wind River for September and still have a meeting next week and just not see Ms. Hinthorn and, and Wind River. I mean, this is purely at the will of the board. You may schedule your meetings as you see fit. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's nothing pressing, pressing on the As of right now, point. I take a deep breath and say, as of right now, no, there is not. Okay. But well, that can change. You guys know as well as I do that can change can, more. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, um, then we go into Labor Day, so that's going to take us four weeks out. It is. Okay. It is. Um, I don't see a problem with waiting four weeks. Maybe what we should do is leave it an open call or, or an open situation that will tentatively schedule September 20, um, August 27, 22nd. Um, if nothing has come in front of the board by the 17th, it needs to be addressed. We will then cancel the 22nd, mm -hmm. okay, and then go on to September. What's the, can, Lisa, can you flip that? I'm yeah. sorry, so it would be, it would be um, so the 22nd, 22nd of August, 10 10. and we would go into so the, the 12th of September. Okay. Your next regular occurring would obviously be the 5th, which is Labor Day and no one right. would be around. Right. So. so I think that's kind of fair, because if, the, if there's anyone out there who is working on something that needs something yeah. approved, that maybe somebody forgot about. But I'll give it for example. What if Mr. McGlone had a set of plans that needed a variance? Mm -hmm. I, I yep. cannot conceive that the board needs me here for that. And if there's a exactly. time sensitive thing, certainly Mr. Diaz could come in with a plan. Anyone could come in mm -hmm. with a plan that you know and feel totally comfortable with discussing and everything else. Exactly. So you could leave it open ended. All right. So I think that is so what I'd like to do. Tentative to business uh, on August 22nd. If not, uh, then we're going to move it to September 12th, 2013. Right. And we'll, and, and we'll, we'll put the cutoff date as of August 17th because that would be when the agenda would have to be in. So if there's nothing that has come to the board to be addressed, um, I will check with Carol on the 17th. And then Carol, if there isn't, just send us all an email. Mm -hmm. Canceling August 22nd, next scheduled meeting, September 12th. And that'll get us through. OK? Perfect. Um, Okay, well, we have until 7 o'clock. Is John McGill coming in? No, no one is. But both your appointments have canceled. The only thing for you to review is 7 Capitory Lane. <laughs> okay. Sorry, everyone bailed. I, Ms. Hinthorn bailed Can last week. But give us a little um, information on what the irrig irrigation well business was about. They have, they're having problems citing a well 100 feet away from, from septics and their septic and surrounding septics. Um, uh, everyone familiar with the site? It's the one next to Dairy Twist? Yes. So it's very densely built. Yeah. When you have that much density and poor drainage and you have a massive septic system at the front. Is that the new construction? Correct. The new construction townhomes. Mm -hmm. Next to right next to Dairy right. West. So they're having trouble siting an irrigation well because they're they're surrounded by wetlands. Mm -hmm. So they're I think what they're trying to do is get a spot closer to the wetlands or up in the corner, but then they start getting close to dairy twists right. um, septic system. This is the problem with this kind of density. This is why this town zones against this kind of density. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they have a little bit of problem. They really want an irrigation well because they really want green, lush, little... For well, most of those units are sold. I, I understand. I don't know what they promised those people. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. keep tailgate. But again, you can't add the, the septic system out front if you didn't see it driving by. It's absolutely yes. massive. I'm mm -hmm. sure most of you, you saw it. Everyone goes up yeah. and down there. You saw how massive it is. Yeah. Needless to say, that's going to be taking a heavy load of water. Um, you know, so, so they're going to have a challenge, you know, citing something that's going to bring up the gallons they need to irrigate that much. Yeah. But it isn't that much area, so I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just surprised that he would have put that off right now um, to the yeah to the extent of where the construction process Lessedly, is Blessedly, it's at. not this board's problem uh, if you know. can't irrigate. So we Blessedly, will, we it is will not our wait problem. for that. So why don't we yeah. take a look at, at 7 Captain, Captain Tory Lane. Line. Gary's gonna get a complex. She's gonna be like, what do I Exactly, Gary. Exactly. Look like, you know. A very professional. Oh, here we go. And that's for you, too. Oh, Carol has one. Thank you. Thank you. What do we got here? I'm sorry, I'm very distracted by this dog bite situation. I apologize. I don't blame you. Um. So what we're looking for here is a separation from groundwater from, four, from bleh, one more time, from four feet to three feet based on a rate two perk test uh, to allow sieve analysis to be formed and allow for a reduction in, in the required 12 foot separation between inlet and outlet tees down to five feet. So Captain Tory has poor soils. This is not really shocking information as it is the groundwater is high, as it is they've already pumped it up, as it is this system is gonna come a foot out of the ground actually two feet as I'm looking at the the contour elevations. This so what they're trying to do, exactly, you, you're familiar with the neighborhood, great. So they're just trying to minimize what will be a somewhat unsightly appearance and not have to do uh, an actual foundation wall or some sort of retention wall around it. Um, the reason for save is obviously they're perking material under the water. You can't perk under the water unless you dewater it and that's a one day to two day event and very costly for the homeowner. So here's where we ended up. Those are the requested variances. If you have some questions, shout out. But this is kind of typical for a lousy soil, high groundwater situation. Where's the, um, where's the variances? I'm sorry. Uh, there you should be printed on there. Lisa, what's sure. the separation from um, 12 feet down to 5 feet? Where is that going to be located? That's the invert. It is the invert. Yeah, inlet outlet. It, technically, all the T's, all these inlet outlets are supposed to be, the tanks are supposed to be that much up. They're going to have to weight down these tanks um, way and or keep them just above um, the, the it's not just the field that's supposed to be above a certain elevation. The inlet and outlet tees of, of the tanks themselves are supposed to be above that. Now, elevation. how would that so affect the system? Is that going to only if it overflows? It, it's an overflow precaution. Okay. In other words, if a tank were to spill over, they want more separation. Or uh, you're asking me to get in the minds of DEP. I'm thinking when they wrote the regulation, it's for overflow concerns. Mm -hmm. All right. But so this is the that. existing one that they plan on crushing and abandoning. Correct. You see that one in place. Okay. And gonna so then they're going to go from the, they want to go to this one. Seven feet of. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. You are absolutely correct. That's exactly right. And then right to the D box. Yep. Right here, and then into this field. And this correct. has a membrane, yes. right? To prevent okay. outbreak. Mm -hmm. Which is what that shows. Yep. Now the four to three feet um, rate for the normally perk. it's four. We always talk four to five in mm -hmm. Pembroke because right. we normally see super fast perks. This one was not. This is class two soil. Class one soil has five foot separation. That means it perked really great. Ninety percent of what we see in Pembroke is really great stuff. Mm -hmm. Like people in other towns hate us because our soil perks so well. Okay. Um, when you go down to a class two soil, usually that's around a 15 minute perk rate. In this case, it was sieve analysis, so it's sieved out as a class two soil. They're going to want a four foot separation. You always ask for a one foot variance. That's why it's four to three instead of what we usually see, which is five to four. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take the sieve analysis to the lab, dry it out, figure already out done. what's in there, already, already done, done. They're and they're going to go up with class two soil. 12 foot separation between the inlet and the outlet fees in a mm -hmm. higher groundwater to five yep. feet. Um, and this plan was done by Morse Engineering, who obviously yeah, had lots of that's what, Yeah, right that's right. what I, I always want to check stuff. here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yep. <laughs> that's, a a good I, that's a good rule to the thumb. Right? They're they're yeah. situate, but they do a fair yeah. amount of work down they here do. too. They do, they do, and yeah. and he's very good. He's yeah. very good. They they all are. Most of them, like, I really like them. But this I know is yeah. all. Yes, you're familiar. Yes, soaking yep. wet. Yep. So, um, Captain Troy, beautiful neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Not the greatest materials, but that's that's true of West Elm. West Elm can be very dodgy on materials. Mm. Yeah. As can certain areas of North Pembroke, Elm Street, that area can be mm -hmm. very dodgy. Pleasant can have some dodgy bits. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. All right, well, awesome. with, with looking at this plan, um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the variances as stated for 7 Captain Tory Lane. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Okay. Um, all right, do me a favor before we lose that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, no, I want to put stuff. that with my stuff. Thank okay. you. So I made a notation here for me about the meetings. Um, okay. Can we get some updates on you? First one yes. is Zika. It so seems the to be coming closer. closer. It's coming closer, but the concern seems to be sticking solely with pregnant women, women who may become pregnant, women that may become pregnant by men that have been exposed. That remains the concern. Right now, we're not seeing like massive outbreaks. It's all people that have traveled to the region. There's one case that they cannot connect the travel to the region, and I know the state's investigating that. Other than that, incidences remain amazingly low, and supposedly they seem to be working on a breakthrough. Did anyone see that news blurb? Um, I'm going to say Boston College. It's not Boston College. It's not Harvard. One of the major universities is having breakthroughs and looking for some state funding. They're having breakthroughs, and they think they are very close to because they have a successful um, vaccine in uh, rodents and such that they are looking to move to human oh, trials. I saw, yeah, I saw um, yeah it, made, it made big news, and it's actually amazing that they came up with it that quickly. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty groundbreaking to move that quick and have that much success, um, but it's going to take a lot of money to get it yeah. up and running, and I think that's the biggest hurdle they face right now, which would be wonderful because anyone, anyone that, that may become pregnant or may be exposed can be immunized. Right now, the self yeah. is really under yeah, the this, scrutiny yeah. of it. Yeah. The one thing about New England is they're going to die exactly. in September and October. Frost! Frost is our friend! Frost is so our friend. We're not now, if it would only kill the ticks, if it would only kill the ticks, we'd be all nah, safe. Oh, they, 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 they are multiplying like They're ridiculous. Like they're ridiculous. Um, they need ridiculous. to have a wildfire yeah. like in how about California. Something. How about um, Triple E? We remain low on both Tripoli and West Nile. That's what I was, if you saw me madly clicking since yep, I left I and came it. back I can in. See you. The, um, the, the newest um, uh, DPH report came out with the, the surveillance and screening and testing, and um, we, we remain low in all the surrounding towns. There's a little bit of hits out in Western Mass, but we have nothing. Okay, Again, so not we, a, I, I keep we don't have to worry. That we don't have to happen. worry about putting a dusk to no, um, no, Not yet. Not on. I, okay. I can almost guarantee, though, it didn't happen last year, but it's happened every other year. Do not be surprised when it comes along. This board has historically gone with the dusk to dawn um, ban as soon as we hit the moderate level. Yeah, it's, right. That's with the sports, with everything. Right. Yeah. And we got to get the kids. That we can't have them out. Yeah. No. And and luckily the schools have always been very supportive of us. As long as it's a it's it's an equal rule, they they not have a problem, which is wonderful. It's nice to have that support rather than absolutely a, a combative situation. Right. And and that I want to make sure that, you know we've always stayed on top of that. Yeah. Um, you have been fantastic about it. I just I worry. Not I worry about again. the kids and I worry about the people. Worry about all the rest well, of I mean, you, who, who doesn't worry after the Middleborough um, football player? Yeah. Died? I mean, there's a healthy young kid. It okay. never should have happened. I mean, that's that's just the saddest right. story I've heard in a long time. Um, one thing that isn't on here, but I think that we should bring up is because um, I'd like an update from you. How are our ponds doing? Where we've had no oh, rain. You're, kind of, you're trying to jinx me. No, you're, you're trying, I know, and I'm going to keep kind of asking jinxing. you because we this haven't had a lot of rain. Spot, no bacteria. We have not had an exceedance yet. God, I'm going to wear out the wood. Um, not even with the ducks. Not, not even with the ducks. Did they stop feeding them down there? I, I, mostly, it's under control. Thank goodness. Most people are listening to it. There's still the few mm. on Little Sandy, and there's still the few on Furnace, but. By and large, they're not feeding. They're not feeding at landing. Actually, a, a huge thanks has to go out to the landing committee and the landing crew down there. They encourage people, don't feed the wildlife, don't feed the animals. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have the support of another group. They're mm -hmm. under no obligation to tell people that, but they tell them, hey, listen, don't feed these animals. It's not good. Poop on the beach. Not good for your kids, you know. So it, it's nice to have that support of Amy and her staff down there, too. How's the water level? The water levels are tragically low. Okay. Now, I have a question. Why am I not seeing any water ban signs? because right now our water supply is keeping up with it. The only reason we had those water issues in Pembroke was because of a ten, uh, one of the, if, for, forgive me, this is now way overstepping my knowledge, but DPW okay. um, lost one of the towers, or okay. one of the pumped houses. I'm really not sure, I'm pretty sure it was one of the towers. Yeah, it was one of the towers. And that's why we had the water issues, the brown water that everyone was freaking out about. It was not dangerous. It was tested the whole time. It was not dangerous. It was iron. It was the sediments that were being drawn out from the very low water draw. Um, they got it back online, pumped it up full, pressure went back to normal as of right now. 
we're not having an issue. But keep in mind, Pembroke, unlike every other town around us that drinks our surface water, we don't. We are 100% well driven here right. in Pembroke. We do so not drink our own surface water. water. Mm -hmm. So in theory, the water levels don't impact us like they would. Everyone saw the Situate um, story on the news. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Situate's in real trouble. Yeah, they are. That's mm -hmm. their only fresh water right there. And uh, Bill and I went out to Situate Lake the other day. And holy cow, it, it's one thing to see it on the news. We're it's another to thing to see that reservoir in person. Yeah. It, to call it a reservoir as it looks now is it's it's very sad. Hole. Silver Lake is very, very low. Okay. Silver Lake is the lowest of all of them. Hobbamock remains normal. Hobbamock is spring fed. Um, Little Sandy's pretty low. Oldham's definitely lower than it's been. Furnace is definitely lower than it's been. Well, well Silver Lake has, because it is Brockton's drinking water. I do not know what, if any, any positions have been put on Brockton. It's wow. not our decision to make. I know. Which, which, that's why a lot of people were complaining, is other people are under water restrictions and no one's seen a water restriction posted in Brockton yet. Mm -hmm. There are a few. There are? No. Yes. Yeah. There um, I, I've been doing a job in Sharon and yeah. I go through Brockton. Oh, so the they do have some spots of that? Yeah. And there are, yeah. Oh, that's good. At least there's some mm -hmm. sort of control in place then. But nothing where but I know I the legislature, or at least the last time I talked to the legislature's uh, Josh Butler and uh, Tom Falter, they were still pushing the issue. And then we've got rain, a lot of rain coming, hopefully. Oh, please. please let it as rain. much as I don't want rain to ruin the summer at this I know, point, I would gladly accept we're that the ground is so We're also going into dry. another snap of a heat wave. So, yeah, um, I'd take the rain in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, so uh, Pima is all set. We are in ready case to we lose power, we're ready to we roll. Are. And we have cooling stations. Yep. And the library and their staff's willing to work extra. The COA is ready. Both are Perfect. generator backed up. Both, All the generators in town, not just those, but the police, fire, and um, DPW barn, which remember that that going down is what caused the roads to get so bad during the storm because they lost the, the ability to pump gas and get equipment out. All of those are now under the service. Please, at New England Generator Matthews, I think they, so they are out once a month. So this this equipment is all being maintained and looked at. So we we do not have the concerns we faced during NEMA. Okay, we have uh, the library as an emergency for FEMA. What do we have any other FEMA. establishments? All the schools are yeah. always available yeah. to us, um, but one of the recommendations of, of many groups is the point of an emergency is always to recover as fast as possible right as we saw during Nemo um, one of Marshfield's biggest problems in recovery is that they use their school as their primary shelter so when Brant Rock which it inevitably is is always underwater um, and they want to get the rest of the town back to normal because the rest of the town's fine they can't because everyone gets sheltered at the school that was part of the the two chiefs of my thinking process when we set up the library like we did is for example, like you know, during Nemo, if we're sheltering 20, 30, 40 people, mostly seniors, because that's right. the nature of it, mm -hmm. um, but, but um, things start coming back online, like the schools, we can get the kids out of the house and back to school so parents can either fix the house or go back to work. Mm -hmm. Remembering when the schools are closed, kids are home, and that, that inhibits people's ability to go to work and do the things they need to do. I'm kind of talking like a little bit of a higher step if we okay. had something where we had to accommodate more than 50 mm -hmm. people. Or oh, no, it, it, people. it's the high school. Then the high we school would, would, yeah. Okay, we've got it all set so yeah. that we if, we go, in there and if we go full on, if we go full on, learning lane. It's a full on because I, I, in Nemo, lane. if I'm not correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. in, when we had Nemo and we lost power for like yep. a week, it was a generator at Pabamoff that, that went. Yeah. So therefore, the COA That's was we open, COA. and we did what we could. Right. to make them as comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. but people, and ironically, people get out they were of the house. much more comfortable there. That, that's yeah. the, the, what we learned from that situation is the population we were providing shelter to responded much better. E everything was vastly improved by being at the COA. Mm -hmm. But yes, if we had... It was in their environment, so it was... Yeah. Exactly. Not only that, I think it was, it was just playing more less, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. It was less if, sterile, if it's in their environment, they're yeah. used to their yeah. environment, right. they're not being displaced in the, in the middle of a, something that's exactly. catastrophic. So exactly. That yeah. does make... That but does, in a mass casualty... And older people are yeah. very subtle. Yeah. So. In a mass casualty, for example, <laughs> if we have a, a mass prophylaxis situation or an outbreak situation, it would be the high school that would be used. Okay. You know, could in you a non-power outage. Could you quickly... Where Gail is new to the board, sure. could you, um, and Gary, I think you already know this, but explain, let's say we have a really bad thing happen. Mm -hmm. What happens? It 100% depends on the nature of the emergency. If we have advance warning, for example, most emergencies we're going to deal with Pembroke, we're going to have some amount of warning. It's going to be a snowstorm or a hurricane or something like that. So the first thing is whenever the weather alerts start popping up on the Han network, the emergency alert network, that's when Rick and Mike and I start picking up the phone and start making phone calls. 
and if it looks like it's going to boil into something bigger, that's when we plan. There's always a Pima pre-meeting, um, which will involve myself, the two chiefs, Gene Fulmini, um, uh, Ed Thorne, um, sometimes a selectman member if, if they're about during the day. I know I usually call you and let you know what's going on. Um, and then whatever other agencies might be impacted. Um, often um, Anna comes over from the COA because it's her population that will obviously be impacted. Um, the director of uh, public housing will often come over because it's his population that will be infected. So depending on the event and who will be impacted, usually it's a, it's a team of the department heads of whoever might be impacted. Obviously for, for storm related that's why Gene's, Gene's involved because that's the road cleaning and everything else. So we'll have a pre-strategy meeting. Um, I will usually then let the public health nurses, um, Margaret Heron is our lead public health nurse, I will send an email to her saying who's around and she'll start doing her mm -hmm. phone messaging of all her nursing staff and saying who's here, who's around, who's available. I will also shoot a message, but Margaret usually does for me, over to the school nurses. Mm -hmm. um, and then they will take a poll of who's around, who's willing to work so that we always have a medical staff medical on staff hand. Medical staff on yeah. hand, yeah. Correct. Right. Depending on the severity, depending on the situation, but we try and start getting head counts. Um, then Sabrina Chilcott and I will do a head count in here, here in Town Hall. Who's around? Who's around this weekend? Who's willing to work if we need you? Um, that type of thing. Um, and, and of course, Carol starts getting organized. She usually checks inventory. What do we have? Do we have everything we need? Um, where is our, our current inventory of supplies? So that's, that's how that will start. Now, in an unannounced event, mm -hmm. that changes everything. It's going to be whatever lead agency is impacted. Obviously, if it's something like an active shooter, or a forest fire, our impact is going to be much less. It's going to be directed, obviously, by the police chief or the fire chief. But something we might do is, again, still call in the nurses, still call in some of our admin help. We might do a coffee station or, or a relief station, water station, to support them sometimes. Charging somewhere outside station. The it, it, exactly. It, it, well, like right, we it had is. the H1N1. We put the clinic on for the H1N1. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think that was back in 2009 mm -hmm. um, when uh, we had to do the kids shots and then you had to get out the information and it had eggs in it so if somebody was allergic to eggs we had to do groups mm -hmm. um, break them down into the groups get the nurses the volunteers these are all the things that I mean FEMA's got so many different branches right. to but it. if this, it is if it is know, a horrific situation where people have to be inoculated it's Habermock which it's, is it's, a high, it's actually the high school. It's well, be it the was high school. Hobbamock before, but yes, that was going to be the high school. It's the high school we did this because at Hobbamock before. Yes, and, and Hobbamock's a great choice. However, having high gone through bigger. over the years, it's bigger. We have more parking lots. We can segregate sick from non-sick if Correct. we need to. Um, we can branch the school better. We also have a secondary access road in using the landfill. So in other words, if we run into a real traffic flow issue, we can open up the gate to the landfill and send people out that sense. way. That the sense. other thing is we can shoot the ambulances out there. If we need that entrance closed to the public, but we can shoot ambulatory um, possible care over there, and they can also land a helo over there. Mm -hmm. So that makes that, um, it, right it just had some, yep. yeah, some slight advantages over Habamock, not huge ones, but Habamock being more square has a more lineal um, traffic pattern. Well, it doesn't have the issue. same dynamics. It doesn't have the same setups right. that the high school does. Correct. Like you said, we were able to, in the high school, there's, there's several different places Correct. where you can quarantine. Correct. In the exactly um, Habamock Elementary School, it's you've got the linear. cafeteria. You, you've got that. Or the yeah, gym. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but it, the gym is where we were But they're next the to each other. And exactly. that creates a problem because exactly. you have they a well have to be population. Separate. You, you really want to separate where if, you, if you've ever been in the high school, I think most everyone has, if you split it out in your mind, we divert right away to the cafeteria and then that open atrium area, that would right be a away. sick and a treatment triage area and we can move those people through to the gym and out and then the two paths never cross which is considered very important in uh, yes. current planning. Well I would like to suggest if Gary and Gail haven't or even haven't known about it, um, if they want to sign up to be part of that emergency management. Mm -hmm. um, I did it. Um, I actually signed myself and my husband up. I figured if I'm going out, he's coming. He's coming with me. Um, You're blessed. I'll sign myself up, but my yeah. husband. He no, likes he, to sit in a tree. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. So um, I think it's really something yes. that that you know. Um, I, well, I think it's storm, as, boy, as soon as I as, yeah, yeah as I think it's I something got, we should have. As soon as I got power on, I. Um, said, okay, I'm good. 
my animal was fine. Um, I got in the car. I came up. I said, what can I do? They were running Actually, out of Actually, it was you and Mr. Juice. Driscoll that gave me a much-needed yeah. night off. We gave you a night off. It and, was the um, third night in a row, and I was like, little cross-eyed. They were running out of, like, little cans of ginger ale and things oh, like yeah. that. So I walked yeah. out. I went over the stop yep. shop. Yep. I filled a grocery cart, and I just brought it in. And I said, you know what? Here you go. And yep. it was... It, made me feel good. It was my donation. These are the things. The little things that just made, and I said earlier, I sat for two hours and I put a puzzle together with two of our two little old ladies. And, you know, we had a ball. Yeah. You know, it's, but it it's took the their little things, but these are it. the things that are very right. important. So I'd like the you more guys to talk to Lisa and get on this. Lisa, if you could. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I have your email, so I'll email you over. Some okay. I'm going to do with the MH. MH. Um, yeah, just get a vote. Uh, is everyone joining? Uh, the first thing I want to add, first of all, I don't oh, yeah. sign people up for junk email or anything else they don't want. But um, obviously you'll need to fill out a form, bring it back to the next meeting, but vote to, to allocate the funds, and I'd be happy mm -hmm. to send those all in for everyone. We, of course, will process. I'll get the invoice process started now. And if you bring those back... Yeah, that, that we can't sign up for yet. It's not ready yet. But the two memberships, the M-H-O-A and M-A-H-B. H-O-A and... M A H B. Correct. I gave we you the national the one, national. but at two hundred dollars, I thought that was a little excessive. Yeah, that myself. really is to start. This is good to start off with to get our feet wet to I, I understand so. and then these where the we're tracks. going. It so gives the information to get into yes. more detail. Uh, yeah, and the town pays for it, so we can fill yep. these out. Um, all right, so I was so looking I'm for a vote just to allocate the fifty dollars per membership for the M A M A H B per uh, per board member, and sixty dollars for the M H O A per board member. And of course, I will join up myself. Can I get a motion? I'd like to make a motion to accept the M H O A um, applications and the M A H B applications um, for the board and Ms. Cullen to. Sign up. Do I hear a second? I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I'll get that processed Aye. so that um, don't panic about your applications. It's going to take me a week or two to at least to get a check from the town uh, treasurer collector's office. So fill those out and bring those back. Use whatever, I think they want an email contact for you and something else. If you want to use this office's information, you're welcome to. We have a fax, we have email here. If you prefer to receive it to yourself, fill it out that way. They set up your membership however you you put it on your application. So it makes no difference to me, but I want each board member to have the information in the format that they'd like it. And the membership is 60 per? 60 per person and 50 per person, correct. 50 for the class? For the no, no, 50 is for the membership. 50. The class is completely separate and will be additional. The membership is 50. The, the memberships all get you a reduction on all the classes, though. If you sign up for a class with any of these organizations and you're not a member, you pay a premium. Whereas if you are a member, you receive a discount. Usually the first class you go to, the discount is more than your membership. So it kind well, of makes 60? sense. You all set? I'm all done. Great. <laughs> what's 60 then? 60 is your annual membership MHOA. for the MHOA. I thought that was 50. No, no that's for the MAHB. There's two different organizations you're looking at. <laughs> so and yes, they all MHB use acronyms to be as confusing as humanly possible. And it's fun when you're at one and you use the acronym of the other. That's really a, an awesome moment. All right, so we can fill these out and get them back to you. Yep. Um, I, I don't already. have anything else. Um, seems like an easy night. So um, unless, Lisa, you have anything to share? No, I, I need I to get, get on this dog bite before to this poor gentleman panics. I don't want him to be concerned. I'm going to make sure this keep all these together. Uh, um, well, together. hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn um, the meeting. Uh, currently, it is 7.06. Um, can I get a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Will you forgive me if I make this Yeah, I just have it. No, I'd like you to deal with that dog bite. Thank you. Um, there was a...